please hit subscribe. So we would like to get the limit of this sequence and the prominent part of the expression is actually the n factorial term in the denominator. So we will know just by looking at this that we will get a lot of information by examining the denominator. So let's just rewrite that expression. So we can rewrite the limit as the following. So we just use the loss of the law of exp the loss of exponents to express it in this term. So we want to find this. Now let's start looking at the denominator, specifically at n factorial first. Now we notice that n factorial is equal to n times n minus one, n minus two, and so on. What we can do first is to have a guess at this limit. So if you imagine n gets bigger and bigger and bigger, and then you get the nth root of every term. But as n gets bigger, the nth root of that term actually also gets closer and closer to 1. But if you have a lot of terms that are slightly greater than 1, then you multiply them out, what you end up getting is a very large number. Because if you have the nth root of n and the n minus first root of n minus 1, or rather nth root of n minus 1, times the nth root of n minus 2, and so on. This is slightly greater than 1, and this is slightly greater than 1, and this is slightly greater than 1. And so the cumulative sum, or rather product, of the entire sequence must be a very large number, because you are multiplying something that is greater than 1, something that is greater than 1, and something that is greater than one and, and you have so many terms that are slightly greater than one. And so this will approach infinity. So that's the intuition. And so I'm going to proceed using this guess. So to show that, in fact, the nth root of the nth root of n factorial approaches infinity, I have to find another term here, another expression that is divergent, diverges to infinity. So my goal is to find this expression that diverges to infinity and is greater than, rather this should be less than this expression. Now let's go back to n factorial and let's break this into two cases. The first case is when n is even. That means it's divisible by 2. So what we can do is as follows. n factorial is now equal to n times, let's do, let's switch the order of operations. So let's do n and multiply it with the last term. So the first term is n, and the last term is 1. So let's do that. And then we have n minus 1. Multiply it with the second to the last term, which is 2. Then n minus 2 multiplied by the third to the last three, term, 3. So the last term there is n over 2 times n over 2. So take some time to convince yourself that this is the case. And we know now that we can make the claim that this whole expression is greater than n raised to the n over 2. And the reason for that is we can show that n, this product here, is less than this product here, it's less than this product here, and so on. And the greatest 
or the largest product is actually n over 2 times n over 2. Let's also mention that there are n over 2 pairs, and that's why the exponent is n over 2. Now, this is a good form because now we can say n factorial is greater than n raised to the n over 2. And if we raise both sides to 1 over n, and if we take the limit of both sides, as n approaches infinity, And therefore, the limit is in fact infinity. And we get a very similar result, or exactly the same result, for when... So let's just show that when, when n is odd... we get the same result. We're going to expand n factorial as follows. n times 1 times n minus 1 times 2 times n minus 1, or rather 2 times 3, and so on. And then the last pair we have is n over 2 n minus 1 over 2, n plus 1 over 2, and lastly we have n minus 1 over 2 plus 1. So this is the last term, this is the middle term, because we have an odd number of, of n, so n is odd, so there is an exact middle term, so this is the exact middle term. And then again we we do our, our inequality, what we get is we can do n raised to the, so here we only have n minus 1 over 2 terms. And again, when we take the limit of both sides, we again get the same limit. And notice that this limit here cannot be less than 1, as well as this limit here cannot be less than 1. In fact, if you take the limits of those expressions as n approaches infinity, those limits will be 1. And therefore, we can say... Now we are ready to just write down our limit. We have limit as n approaches infinity of 1 over n factorial raised to the 1 over n. And we saw that this denominator, the limit of this is infinity, and therefore the limit of this whole expression is 0. Now, before we end the video, let's just t make a note that the expression n, or rather the inequality n times n minus 1 times 2 is less than n minus 2 times 3, and so on, can be proven by, can be proven by mathematical induction. So we won't do it here, 
try it and if you want a video for that you can just write down in the comments and also we want to know that this limit is one and we will show this in another video please hit subscribe